Hello everyone, in today's video uh, we're going to take a look at some of the most recent changes uh, for command modern operations. Uh, for those of you who have been uh, trolling the forums recently, you probably spotted this new update that came out just a little while ago. Uh, they're calling it the 114718 update. And uh, inside this update there's a bunch of key, neat little things here. Some of them are pretty straightforward. We got, you know, basic uh, bug corrections. We added a whole bunch of new units. But there are two very interesting features that were just brought in. Uh, the first one is allowing you to use iris, which is infrared search and track as fire control, which is a very interesting discussion if you missed it. And the second thing it is, is it's changed the sonar model significantly. Now, there's some other things that are actually going to go on here. And if uh, you want to read this particular post, it's actually really, really interesting because it talks about the fact that the convergence zones are actually dependent on both temperature as well as how far you are away from the North Pole. It's actually really, really, this is a great technical discussion for folks who are like into this kind of things. And there was also this nice little chart that came along with it. And it also had a great response from uh, the developer who basically talked about some of the different pieces here. So again, this is really, really cool stuff. But we're going to be taking a look at both of those in command. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first one. Go pull this out of the way so you don't need to see it. So the first one was adding the ability to use iris as a way to go ahead and target aircraft and actually engage them without giving anybody any warning. So what I have here is a Raphael M. Uh, this is the 2019 version, in case you're curious. There's actually a bunch of different versions of this that you can actually use. Um, they actually gave us a little post, let me go and grab that, that shows you all the different sensors that have this capability. Again, this is on that little forum topic if you want to check it out. So what I've done with this aircraft is I've taken off its radar. Now you're probably going, well, that's kind of dangerous. Why would you do that? Well, the reason is, is because I needed to demonstrate the fact it doesn't need a radar to launch missiles anymore because the missiles can be guided via data link or CEC. So off this guy's nose right now, and we can't see this just yet, is I have a pair of MiG-28s here uh, pretty much ready to rock. So what's going to happen is Raphael's going to sneak up, identify them with the iris, and then engage them without them ever knowing the guy was behind them because they never activate their emitters. So let's go ahead and unpause real quickly. I'm going to go ahead and bring the Raphael up to afterburner speed here so they can kind of catch up to this other aircraft just so you can kind of see what this looks like in action. Raphael, by the way, is equipped with uh, two meteors, which are these you know, pretty big missiles. Uh, again, this is, um, if you want to think about it, it's kind of like a knockoff of the AMRAM. Again, what isn't? I think the AMRAM is a knockoff of the meteor. Uh, we also have, of course, the Mica em and the Mica er as well, which are both really, really solid platforms that we can use for this particular purpose. Remember, these are receive-only. This is a data link weapon. This is not going to be actively guided. Okay, so we've already acquired one of the different targets. We're going to get a little bit closer. And we've already acquired the second target. So I'm going to go ahead and attack both of these. I'm just pressing F1, dragging a box around them. Let's go ahead and switch on to the other side real quick. Let's go ahead and unpause, and you can see my two uh, MiG-28s here just chilling. They're having no warning until suddenly, out of nowhere, a radar guided, actually a data link missile comes out and slaps one of them right out of the sky. The other one, of course, uh, misses, unfortunately. He sees it, panics. He's going to turn himself around and try to uh, bring his nose directly onto that threat and see what happens. Of course, uh, as soon as he finishes turning around, there's probably going to be two or three more missiles basically arriving right on my poor MiG-28 and splashing it right out of the sky. That entire engagement was done with long-range missiles without a single radar being turned on. As a matter of fact, our Raphael here is uh, looking large and in charge. If anything, he's probably heading back to base, uh, back at Nellis. Indeed. Okay, so the other thing that they added, which is a little different, is they've changed the way that convergence zones work. Now, if you remember, convergence zones were basically a way of um, bouncing sound off the sea floor or off of um, the sound layer, basically. So you could pick up things at extremely long ranges. So unfortunately, uh, the calculations for that in the old days were not quite correct. Uh, they were basically didn't take into account latitude nearly as effectively. So what we have here is we have ourselves a handy dandy Virginia class, and it's basically sneaking up on this SSBN, which is a uh, Delta to four, I believe, if I recall correctly. Now, this particular submarine here is chilling at 459 feet below sea level. This guy is chilling at about 853 feet below sea level. I'm going to go ahead and press the F2 key and bring up my depths. Notice we have the presence of a good old-fashioned uh, acoustic layer here. It's a pretty thick layer. You can see you could be chilling in there and basically be invisible. Tons of room above it, tons of room below it. Also, keep in mind, we are sitting here at the equator, creeping along, going pretty darn slow right now. Now, this other submarine is actually below the layer and we're above it. The only reason we're able to detect each other is because of the fact that the Virginia submarine here has got this spectacular towed array that's basically dipping down below the layer so it can actually detect the submarine. Now, where it gets interesting is if I order my Virginia to actually dive down, which I'll go ahead and do, I'll set it as deep as possible, and I go ahead and grab my delta over here and order my delta to go up, um, let's say, shallow, 
you create an interesting problem where it becomes difficult to detect each other because they're on the wrong side of that. As a matter of fact, poof, you can see that delta 4 is completely gone now because it floated above the layer. So unfortunately, my sensor platform, and I've talked about this during the sonar tutorial, is now below where the actual layer is, and our target is above, which means I can never detect them anymore. So that's um, obviously at low altitudes. Again, okay, I'm saying uh, as far as equator goes, this is a known issue, and it's actually kind of complicated. Now here's where the change kicks in. If we go to the high latitudes, I'm gonna go all the way up to the North Pole here, you can see that I have myself, my uh, SSN, same exact submarine, and it's following the same exact type of other submarine, but watch what happens when I hit F2 this time. You'll notice that there is no layer in existence. And not only is there no layer here because of our depth issue, you'll notice that we're picking up the submarine that we're trying to find behind us, not in front of us. Remember, a toad array is dipped behind you, not in front. So now I'm going to go grab my boomer real quick. Huh, okay, boomer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to order this uh, boomer to go ahead and come up, uh, to, let's say shallow. And I'm going to go ahead and take my Virginia. I'm going to order my Virginia to go down. Now, normally when you do something like this, we'll have the same situation that we had back before, where we go right underneath the acoustic layer and we completely lose track of the other submarine that we're tracking. So I'm going to go ahead and go deep, 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 deep. Notice, not only were we able to identify that submarine, but we've also been able to classify that submarine, something we couldn't do before because we're actually detecting that submarine. Let me go ahead and grab it using a different sonar set because there is no acoustic layer in place. Now, if you do read that article that's on the website, it actually goes into great detail as to why this effect exists. But from a playing perspective, you just have to know that the further up the latitudes you go, the deeper the layer is going to be, meaning your submarine operations are going to have to be significantly deeper if you wish to take advantage of that particular feature. Otherwise, you're going to be in the situation like we have over here where I completely lose track of it until I reacquired, by the way, because basically I got right on top of it, so I was able to listen to it again. So these are the two big changes. Um, there was another change that came in that was very, very interesting. I just want to bring this one up super quick here. And that was the fact that they brought in new facilities. And our new facilities here are basically broadcast stations. Now, you're probably wondering why these are all here. It's because they're going to be bringing in PCLS receivers, which is basically the ability to detect units based on passive uh, radio signals. If you want to imagine a TV signal bouncing off an airplane and then being picked up by the special receiver, that would give us the ability to do that. This is not in the program yet at this time. So it's something you're going to have to kind of keep an out for. Other than that, I just thought I'd share some of those things for you in case uh, you haven't seen them or you're not sure why things are behaving differently than they used to before. The key thing to watch out for is there's only a limited list of iris-based aircraft. And again, that effect is uh, still visible. All you have to do is click on your sub and go ahead and uh, push the F2 key and you can see the existence of the layers. Enjoy.